Okay, so now we're going to look at linked objects. These are things that are tied together with strings and stuff. So linked objects. The simplest case to look at is going to be uh, masses on strings. I'll just do two. So let's say we had a four kilogram block connected to a two kilogram block. And then we're pulling it with a tension of say six newtons. Okay, so we can ask a couple questions. One would be what's the tension right here? So what's T2? Let's call that T2, this will be T1. Um, we could figure out this tension, we could figure out the acceleration of the system, we could do all kinds of stuff. But um, let's ignore friction for now, so no friction. So basically if we look at the acceleration of the entire system, that's the, the key, is looking at this system. So once I define the system to be everything, this tension right here doesn't matter, but we can come back and figure that out. So for step one, we look at the entire system. So the acceleration of the system would be the net force on the system divided by the mass of the system. So the acceleration of the system, well, the only force acting on it that's moving it, the up and down is uh, washes, so we don't care, is going to be this, uh, the tension one, divided by the mass of the system. The mass of the system is both of them, four plus two. And so we get the acceleration of the system is going to be six divided by, oh, that's convenient, six. So the acceleration of the system is one meter per second squared. Okay, so if the whole thing is accelerating one meter per second, then that means this one's accelerating one meter per second. So now we can just say, well, let's just look at this thing right here. So now the red one. So the acceleration of the four kilogram is going to be the net force on the four kilogram divided by the mass of the four kilogram. So the acceleration of the four kilogram, well, it's, that's just one. We plug that in. We know that we already calculated it. So that's 1 equal to the net force acting on it is that T2. So we get T2 over the mass, which would be 4. So we get 4 times 1 is 4, and that's T2. And that makes sense. Um, so we get T2 equals 4. So 6 to pull both of them, 4 to pull the 4. Um, that just worked out, okay? So don't think it's always going to be... There is a way. You can think about this uh, rationally, um, meaning using ratios, but we need to get into more complicated ones for you to start to develop that. Uh, but it makes sense. So please don't fall for the trap that the tension here would be the same over here because of Newton's third law or something like that. Um, that's not true. Basically, the tension here is pulling all of the weight behind it. The tension here is pulling all of the weight behind it. If I had another one, that tension would be pulling all of the weight behind it. So if I had another block, this tension would go up, and so would this one, because it has to pull this additional mass. <coughs> so um, we'll do more complicated ones in class. But now we're going to look at Atwood machines. So Atwood machine. So this was a physicist, uh, I think George, George or Robert Atwood. I don't know. Anyway, he wanted to study uh, G. So what he did is he devised a, a method for doing that by attaching blocks over a pulley. So ran it over a pulley, attached different sized blocks, and then released it. And so what you would get is some acceleration. And um, by doing some calculations, you could figure out that this was just a, a, a percentage of G and then we, we could recover G. And so when you have these two blocks hanging over a pulley, or sometimes it's two pulleys, so you might see it like this, a block, and then two pulleys to another block, that's also the same thing. These are called an Atwood, Atwood machines. And in particular, this is a full Atwood. And what we're gonna look at first is gonna be, it's called a half Atwood. And I'm going to show you how I always think about these and deal with them because it's, uh, it's counterintuitive. So a half Atwood, we only have one block that's hanging. So you have some table, or some frictionless surface. This is also called a modified Atwood machine. And then you hang a mass off of it. Okay. We'll call this mass one, mass two. 
Okay, so this question comes up a lot, and they say, if you release this, what's going to be the acceleration of the block up top? So what's the acceleration of 2? And then most students would say, well, that's going to be 9.8, because that's g. And the only thing, since there's no friction, the only thing is this, force pulling this. And so it's g, and no, oh, that's wrong. Um, so please don't fall for that. Uh, outward machines, you don't, don't necessarily think it's going to be g. Um, they're trying to trick you. And so what we have to think about is the forces that are acting on this. And you can see that, well, we have the force of gravity here on 1. And that's it, because uh, this is tension going this way. And then I have tension coming back this way. And then we have normal, and we have the force of gravity, but those don't do anything. So it's, it's all being generated from right here. But I have two masses, so my acceleration is not going to be g. The only way I could get that is if the force of gravity on 1 divided by the mass of 1 is equal to the acceleration. So that would only be if I had one mass there, because then that would be m1g over m1, and so I would get the acceleration is equal to g. But that's not the case because of this. And so what I do is I actually pull this thing up and I redraw it to start analyzing it. And so if I redraw it, this is m2 connected by a string to mass 1, what I've done is I've just swung this up. Then my force of gravity is this way. It's force of gravity on one. And now we're back to the problem that we just did. This makes it a lot easier. So the acceleration of the system is going to be the net force on the system divided by the mass of the system. So the acceleration of the system is going to be the force of gravity on one divided by the mass of the system, mass one plus mass two. So the acceleration of the system would be m1 times g over m1 plus m2. There we go. So you see it's not g. What it is is it's a ratio. Mass 1 over mass 1 plus mass 2 times g. So it's how much of the percentage is a percentage? Yeah, this would be a small divided in, yeah, wait, small divided into a bigger number. So you get a piece of G, basically. Um, but that's how you deal with these, is you lay them out, and then we can go back and figure things out. Um, this works for a full Atwood machine as well. So if you had a, a full Atwood machine, you just got to be careful with your signs when you do this one. These are connected. I'm just, I didn't draw it over, but they're connected. Let me just draw it, because somebody's going to say they weren't connected. So mass 1 and mass 2. So let's say this one's bigger. So it's going to accelerate this way. I mean, it doesn't matter. We could figure it out. But basically, the acceleration of the system would be the net force on the system divided by the mass of the system. OK. Um, the thing is, is that this force here, the force of gravity on 2, is in the opposite direction of the force of gravity on 1. So if I pull this off the pulley, pull it off the pulley. I would get something like this. This would be the force of gravity on 2, and this would be the force of gravity on 1. I hope you can see that. So I've pulled this one up here, and I pulled this one up here, and then the forces come along with them. So now I can analyze this. So the net force, the acceleration of the system, would be this one, the force of gravity on 2, minus this one, force of gravity on 1, divided by the mass of the system. That would be uh, mass 1 plus mass 2. So we get m2 times g minus um, m1 times g over m1 plus m2. Then we can factor it out. So we get m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2 times g. None of this cancels. Um, that would be the acceleration of the system. So not that difficult. Just redraw it, figure out the direction of your forces, and you'll be okay.